Hello, my name is Aviva, and today I'm going to share with you some of the books that I've read recently. So in the first half of the month, I ended up reading 13 books and some of them were pretty fine, but overall I feel like I've had like a meh first half of the month. Not that it really matters, but anyway, the first book that I wanted to share with you is Playing for Keeps by Kendall Ryan. So this is a hockey romance. It's basically like a best friend's brother sort of thing. Like she ends up going out with like her brother's roommate who also happens to be like her brother's best friend from childhood. And they've always kind of like, you know, had crushes on each other, but they never actually made a move until the beginning of this book. And and anyway, I thought that it was okay, but I honestly picked it up because I was looking for more like sports romances like the off campus series. And a lot of people said like, oh, this is very similar. Except in my opinion, I thought that it wasn't as good. It was a little bit too steamy for me and it wasn't backed up enough with a good enough plot line. Like the plot line was very basic. Like it wasn't too, you know, layered on top of each other sort of thing. And therefore instead we got a lot of steamy moments moments and I totally would have rather like a couple of less steamy moments and like make it more I don't know a little bit like more tension filled a little bit more angst a little bit more on the plot and that's kind of how I feel in general about like steamy romances like I'm all for the steam but you have to back it up with a good plot and in my opinion this one was a little bit too heavy on the steam and too basic on the plot. I also ended up finishing the Club Trilogy by Lauren Rose. So this is a collection of three books. And then there is a completed epilogue book that's like a full length book. And then there's also a spinoff series by Josh and Kat. So I only read the first three books, like the completed trilogy. And I'm pushing off the epilogue until I read Josh and Kat's story, which is a collection of three books. Because somebody told me that the epilogue takes place after the spinoff series. So I kind of want to read Josh and Kat's stories first. And then I'm going to like jump back to the Club epilogue. So for now, I've read the first three books in this series and I very much enjoyed it. It's probably one of like the steamiest books I've read so far this year, but it was backed up with a really good plot. Like the plot line was like this guy ends up joining this like sex club of sorts. And then the person that is like, you know, doing his application sees it and decides to send him like a private letter based off of what he says. And then the story kind of goes from there and there's a romance between like the application girl and then this guy who decided to join a sex club for a full year. And it was really, really steamy, but like just that plot line in general made that steaminess like backed up really well. And I very much enjoyed this series. I gave it like an overall four stars. It was thoroughly entertaining. It had a lot of good sex scenes. And in general, I liked it. After that, I ended up reading the entire All Saints High trilogy. So it's Pretty Reckless, Broken Night, and then Angry God. And I actually made an entire like vlog of myself reading this. So I'm going to make sure that that is linked in the description below in case you wanted to see like, I don't know, how long was it? Maybe like half hours worth of me rambling about what I thought about these books as I was reading them. But basically, this is the spinoff series to the Center of Saints series, which I had read in middle of the summer. And I absolutely loved like every single book in that series got like a four or five stars like seriously thoroughly enjoy that series and this series is basically following their children as they're in high school and in general I liked it but honestly I really only liked Broken Night which is the second book this was like a friends to lovers sort of book like they've been friends since they were children and then you know they eventually became like you know in a relationship sort of thing throughout the book and I love this one I think I gave this one like four or five stars in the moment and then Angry Gods which was the last one I only gave like three stars I didn't really like it and pretty rough I think I gave like four stars because I liked it, but it was a bully romance. And I sometimes don't like how heavy bullying can get. And I sometimes felt like it was like, this is too intense. Like, why are all these people like, okay, with being so freaking mean to each other sort of thing. So anyway, this one was okay, but I really mostly only liked Broken Night from this series. Like if I was ever going to do a reread, I probably only reread Broken Night's book. So sometime around right here, I ended up finishing up the third third and the fourth book in the Miss Peregrine series, which I've been listening to on audiobook for the past, like, I don't know, month or two. And I really enjoyed the third book. I was like a huge fan of the first three books in the Miss Peregrine series. And then I read the fourth book and I was kind of like, eh, 
I don't really know where like the story is going. Like I wasn't a huge fan of it. Like I was just like getting bored. Like it took me so long to like finally finish the fourth book that I've decided that I don't think I'm going to continue with the Miss Peregrine story. And it's funny because a lot of people like DM'd me when I like said it in my stories on Instagram. They're like, oh, I felt the same way. Like just like don't continue. Like the first three books were good, but like let's just like keep it there. And I'm kind of agreeing with that. So I did listen to the fourth book, but I'm gonna stop there and I'm just gonna like start a new series. Maybe one day I'll come back to it, but at the end of the day, I kind of wish they just stuck it out to be like the first three books. Like I thought the first three were like so good. And then like the story was changing and I'm like, eh, I don't know. Anyway, next up I have Broken French by Tasha Boyd. So this is basically about this girl who ends up quitting her job as an architect and she gets this opportunity to go and be a nanny for this like billionaire in the south of France as they go take like a month vacation on his yacht. And even though she's not a nanny for whatever circumstances, she ends up deciding to take the job. And then when she gets there, she obviously is gonna fall in love with the child. They're gonna become best friends. And obviously she's gonna have a romance with this single dad that, you know, the child belongs to and it was really good I thoroughly enjoyed it but it was a little bit like thick and also a little bit like textured for me I'm usually a big fan of like very heavy on the romance and there was a little bit more going on than like you know just the romance like you had the kid you had the whole vacation like they were in the south of France and like vacationing and like touring and all that sort of stuff and it was thoroughly enjoyable like that was a lot of fun and I think a lot of people would like absolutely love this because you get such like an atmospheric tone to it like it really felt very cool to like be a part of this story but I think I picked it up at a little bit of the wrong time just because like I wasn't having like the best of luck in books and I think that reading a story that was a little bit like you know more angsty tension filled a little bit heavier on like just the girl and the boy's story would have been a better move for me at this specific time but I still really enjoy this I think I gave it like I don't know, three, maybe four stars, but like it was good. And I think that like, if you really like that type of story, like, you know, a single dad, nanny position, South of France, a lot of like textured, atmospheric, let's go on vacation sort of vibes, then I think you would really love this book. After that book, my month started to like turn around a little bit better, which was really nice. And I picked up Stolen Air by Sophie Lark. So this is the second book in the Broken Birthright series. And I absolutely loved this book. I literally read it in like maybe a sitting and a half. I read it in like one night, loved it couldn't put it down it's a beauty and the beast retelling but it's also a kidnapping like stockholm syndrome vibe book the bird of ruthite series is a mafia romance companion series it's a collection of six books so when you go into books like this you have to already be aware that there's going to be trigger warnings and stuff like that because mafia books in general come with stuff like that so if you have anything to look out for i definitely recommend like doing some research on your own or maybe dming me on instagram but basically i loved this book i don't think i've ever read a book that was such a beauty and the beast retelling usually like people take the beauty and the beast vibe and then they like make their own story on it but in this book it felt very like bell and the beast like i really felt that story like i really thought like i was reading a mafia version of the beauty and the beast movie and because of that i really did enjoy it it was a little bit different than anything i've read because i've never read something so close to you know the actual retelling but i'm saying this in a really good way of like i really thoroughly enjoyed it and i was like fully captivated. I just thought that this was a great book and I seriously cannot wait to continue on with this entire series. After that, I read Dirty Letters by V. Keeland and Penelope Ward. So I loved this book. This is a pen pal story. These two people, they like started being pen pals when they were younger. Their schools set them up and basically they kept in touch like throughout their entire school time, like until they were like 18 years old. They were best friends. They shared everything with each other, but they didn't actually know like each other's real names or anything like that. And basically something happened happened to the girl when she was 18 or so and she ended up stopping to write him letters and he got really mad and now it's like eight years later and he sends her one more letter of like why did you never write me back like I really kind of hate you for like just like dumping me like that without giving me an explanation and then she ends up sending him a whole letter of like why she stopped writing him and things like that and then they start writing each other again and then their letters kind of turn like steamy and sexual because they're now both adults and they kind of realize like maybe I've liked you this whole time and that's why I was mad that you know you never answered me and like it's a whole big thing and anyway they start like sending letters to each other again and now they want to meet in person and then obviously the story is going to go from there so I really enjoyed this book there is a lot more going on than what I mentioned but I don't want to give away any spoilers so all I'm going to say is that there are a lot of layers in this story and this book kind of felt like a hug to the heart like this guy was so freaking sweet like I don't think you're going to find a better book boyfriend than this guy like he was almost too good to be true after that I picked up a book called give me a reason 
by AK Jackson. And unfortunately, I found my like third or fourth DNF of the year and I DNF'd this at page 100. I was not really a fan of this. This is like a biker, motorcycle gang sort of romance. I mean, I didn't even get that far into the book. So like, I don't really know like the extent as to like what that was, but it's basically like this girl ends up working at this uh, bar or something that happens to be like a motorcycle vibed bar and the guy is the owner and then they're like going to have a romance. So the thing is, is that I very much didn't like the writing style. It was way too textured for me, like way too much explanation. Like it was too way down, like so freaking way down in the writing style that I couldn't handle it. And then I ended up skipping to like the back of the book. I really don't mind seeing spoilers. So I skipped to the back of the book just to see like where it's going. Is it worth it? Should I like really push through? and just maybe like skim the whole thing and then I saw this like massive freaking spoiler I'm like oh my god I do not want to see this play out like I wasn't even a fan of it I don't want to see how that's going to happen like I don't like that as an ending so I'm like screw it goodbye and the last book that I'm going to share with you is Happily Letter After by V. Keeland and Penelope Ward so I didn't hate this book but I didn't love it either I ended up giving it like three stars only because it was like it was too Hallmark cutesy for me. Like it was too predictable, too good to be true sort of vibes. Like this just stuff, this doesn't happen in real life sort of thing. And I would have rather like spend two hours watching a movie of this than like spend all that time reading the full book of it. But it's basically about this girl who basically writes a column in a magazine and this little girl sends her in like a letter, like thinking that she's Santa Claus, like asking her for a couple of things. And this girl really like connects to the little girl. So she decides like to try answering like, all of her requests and everything and then the story is going to like take off from there and this girl happens to have like a single father and then the writer is going to end up having like a romance with the single dad and like the story is just going to like play out from there and a lot more is going to happen and I just think that it was like it was set up a little bit too perfect for me like I don't know it just it wasn't very realistic in my opinion but also like it was pretty cute and if you're looking for like a good Christmas themed sort of Hallmark book then I would recommend this one because it had that vibe to it but I didn't pick it up thinking that it had that vibe and therefore I was a little bit like disappointed and like not so into it but if I did know that it was like oh you're picking up one of those Christmas Hallmark books then I would have probably enjoyed it more than that because like that's what I would have expected from it sort of thing so yeah so anyway it was okay but it wasn't the best that I've read by these authors but anyway those are all the books that I wanted to share with you because they're all the books that I read in the first half of November so I'm curious to know if you read any of these books what you thought about them or you can let me know what you read in the beginning of November if you think anything was good enough to like add to my own TBR because I'm always looking for good recommendations but anyway if you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up if you're not currently subscribed to my channel please hit that subscribe button and anyway thank you for watching and until next time enjoy reading